Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into this channel and this video. This is the new Morimoto MLED by LED projector. I'm going to be doing a quick overview. My name is Caesar from lightworks.net and we were lucky enough to have Morimoto send us one of the units for a quick comparison and a product overview. So we got some photos, check out our website, check out our Facebook. You're going to be able to see everything right over there. This is the projector itself. I'm going to be going over uh, what you can expect on the projector, what you see on the projector. You know, unlike a HID based unit, this is the main unit here. You have a driver box. And when it comes to the HID world, uh, that driver is usually connected to an igniter or an adapter. You have a wiring harness. I'm going to get into that later. But these are the two things you're going to see come with the product. You're going to have two of these, uh, two drivers, two projectors when you purchase this, uh, this kit from us. This is the main projector itself. You're going to see just one wire. It's a waterproof connection. Makes things really simple. If you're exiting the housing, um, you can easily put a grommet. You can use a cable gland. You can do a lot of things, but you're only going to have one wire controlling the high and the low beam function of this unit. You're going to see a threaded shaft. Threaded shaft is popular these days. Direct fitment on H4. You can see the H4 adapter right there. Um, and then it's you know it's it's custom slash threaded fitment on a lot of other options on a lot of other models too. You can easily use this in another dual filament application like a 9007 or uh, H13. You got to modify a little bit, but also in single filament, you know, um, a lot of people are doing threaded shaft method. You put a lock ring on here, and you can bolt the projector down to a reflector. But all else fails, you also have a mounting bracket. If you've got a good eye, you realize that mounting bracket is actually the same as the D2S 4.0, which makes a lot of sense because you can, uh, you can use brackets that uh, Morimoto offers. You can use retrofit brackets that we offer at lightworks.net. We have custom brackets for various applications. So that's gonna be your nut and bolt uh, you know, mounting method, if you wanna call it that. Nice solid plate in the middle of the projector. Um, and it's your custom bracket mount. So that makes a lot of sense. Back to the thread shaft I forgot to mention. You can see those three torque screws. Once you remove those, this threaded shaft is actually removable. So that means the projector is gonna stop right there. You're saving almost an inch of space, which is amazing because it makes this unit really compact. So uh, personally, uh, at Lightworks, we do a lot of nut and bolt uh, applications. That's how we mount our projectors. And having a space saving unit is, is really key for a professional builder. But also for, uh, you know, just for do-it-yourselfers and for hobbyists, it's nice to be able to get in there and uh, not worry about space. Because with HID, I'm going to compare that in a little bit, you've got a lot of space. We see a fan down here and a really nice, thick cooling fins. Once I turn that unit on, that's going to actually spin. That's the high beam solenoid. It's going to move the shutter. It's going to move that shield inside the projector uh, kind of back and forth and exposing the high beam. Nice clear lens on this unit. When you see the performance and the output, you're going to see how sharp it is. They definitely did a great job. A lot of the other LED unit uh, LED units on the market just aren't as sharp. Morimoto, um, you know, definitely came out with a really, really strong competitor. I haven't seen anything like this on the market. Um, Intensity-wise, you guys are going to see it's absolutely crazy. I don't think anything's going to hang with it intensity-wise. But uh, real quick, I've got an HID set up right here. This is the Morimoto D2S. You can see they share a lot of similarities. That's got the bulb attached to it already. Um, so you can see with the igniter on there, I mean, that's about three quarters of an inch uh, longer on the left-hand side. If we remove that threaded shaft, I mean, we're saving about maybe an inch and a half. I haven't actually measured it. But you can also see that the front is a little bit different. Um, so a lot of space savings with this unit. Overall, it's got the same, you know, mounting pattern and uh, bolts and everything. So makes it very convenient. Let's say you're running this unit inside your headlight already. You can use the MLED. You know it's going to fit. So with HID, you have a HID bulb. You got an igniter. This is a D2S igniter, and then you have a ballast. I'm going to show you that right now. And with the LED. You're going to do a direct connection. So 
So let me just show you what I've done here. So you can see this is the two units now. This will still most likely require a wiring harness, especially if you're running it um, on an older vehicle. Some of the newer vehicles you can get away with, but um, with the LED unit, you're not going to need a wiring harness unless you have a dual filament application. So you need both high and low beam um, in one kind of wire and connector setup. That's when you're going to want a, um, a wiring harness. Otherwise, you can plug this directly into your wiring. Let's say you have a Honda Civic. It's 9006 low, 9005 high. Direct connection. You don't need anything. It barely draws any power. It's really, really nice. With the HID setup, um, you got a ballast, you got the igniter, you got the bulb, that's all powering. The LED chipset is actually inside of the projector. You're not really looking at it until you open it um, and the wires run directly to it. So you can see how much space this is actually saving, how much hardware. When you factor everything into your decision making, HID versus LED, you're going to realize that um, you know, it'd be great to ditch all of the HID equipment because it's a lot of gear and a lot of things to go wrong. and Ballast can go bad, igniter can go bad, bulb can go bad, bulbs fade over time. So are we there just yet? Are we all switching today? Probably not. But this is a really strong contender and it's definitely going to make you think twice about ditching this whole setup versus the new MLED. Uh, before we get into a comparison, I didn't really want to uh, compare the HID versus the LED, but I'm going to anyway because I have a few things on my mind. You're going to see how fast this warms up. And by how fast, I mean it's instant on. There's nothing to it. That's, that's it right there. With HID, depending on the ballast that you have, let's say you have a really low quality ballast, you could be waiting 15, 20 seconds for it to warm up. High beam function, also instant, but it is instant on the HID projectors as well. You feel like your high beam is going to change right there. All right, that's all there really is to it. I'm going to fire up the HID system now. I'm going to put it right above it. This is a 50, 50 watt XB55 Morimoto ballast. It's a Philips Blue Vision bulb. You know, the LED uh, unit, the one thing I didn't get into is it's about 6,000 Kelvin, I would say. It's a nice, crisp blue color, um, a whitish blue color. It's not pure blue, but. You know, since it has the intensity of a 50 watt HID projector, I decided to compare it with a with exactly that uh, Philips Blue Vision uh, OEM bulbs in here, Morimoto D2S 4.0 projector, and a XB55 Morimoto ballast. You can see how much warmer the color is on the HID unit. Um, unfortunately, um, that's, that's just really how it is. When you put a 50 watt system, it's increased wattage. You're going to wash out the color and sort of drop down in terms of the color scale, but it's very, very bright. So with the LED system, you know, you, you see that modern look of all the new cars out on the road, all the Lexus, Acura, they have that nice white color that a lot of people seek. So when it comes to coolness and the factor of the pure white light, people really love that. You can see this one looks yellow in comparison. It's not really like that in person. It is definitely warmer in color, but it's all relative. But the biggest thing about the color and everything is the warm up time um, and the fact that the color is never going to change on the LED unit. I'm going to do a quick width comparison. The HID system is definitely uh, brighter here, uh, wider, sorry. Definitely extends a little bit wider. The intensity, I'm not going to go up there right now by the wall, but I measured about 556 lux from 32 feet on the new MLED, which is tremendous. And out of this HID unit, I actually only measured, I think about 440. So big difference there. Um, if we do a shield mod like I've been doing, you're going to be able to extract maybe 20, 25% and then you're going to be able to get right there in terms of the overall shear intensity. We know we can't compare the beam pattern or the projector simply with uh, you know, the, the highest reading hotspot, but if you want 50 watt performance, 
you want really, really bright lights, you want instant on, and you don't want it to change, you love the color, the LED system is directly for you. The HID system, the, the benefit is you have a lot of different things that you can change over time. You can change this ballast to a 35 watt if you decide it's too much. You can change the bulbs out in a few years or a few months to a, a CBI or a Philips White Vision or whatever you prefer. With this, you're not changing the color, you're not changing the intensity, you're not gonna be doing anything to modify it really. So when it comes to overall customization and um, you know tweaks, tunes, the HID system, the HID projector is really where it's at. Out of the box, this is a tremendous unit. You're not gonna need to do anything. Uh, Heat-wise, I noticed that this unit really doesn't get too hot. You can hold it. The HID system, it gets too hot to hold after a while. Um, just a few notes on the product itself. This is the driver. This is going to be a uh, laser engraved uh, Morimoto logo as always. It's a production version, so it's a little bit different. These two inputs, <clears throat> they're going to be labeled uh, like Morimoto harnesses. Uh, we got the low beam here on the right hand side and the high beam here on the left hand side. I don't know if they plan to make a grommet in here. That would be pretty nice. Uh, but we sell grommets. We sell cable glands. You can use all that. Nice disconnectable connection there. Um, this, some of you guys may have seen it. There's an M there. Um, they need to flip that around. They want the M to be seen from kind of the driver's seat, not the oncoming traffic. So they're going to flip it around. Some people said, you know, they don't really like that. They don't want any logo cast on the ground or anything. You put a piece of aluminum tape there, it's gone. So no, no stress about that. You know, as far as modifying these for extra color, you don't need to. Modifying them for extra intensity, I don't think you can. I could be wrong. I love to be proved wrong. But as of right now, out of the box, this is an amazing unit. Uh, you don't need to really do anything to it. So if you guys have any questions, you can email me, info at lightworks.net. We can definitely assist you. These are going on pre-sale today. It's early August right now, and we expect to have them ready in about maybe four more weeks uh, if everything goes smooth. So pre-order with us, ask any questions. We're happy to help you out. But this is going to serve as a quick teaser for everybody as uh, the rest of the world's waiting for the product to come in stock. So make sure you reach out to us if you need anything. And uh, I hope this review was a, a quick demonstration of the product, what you can expect from it, what you can expect HID. Once again, we have the photos, comparisons available on the website. I'm going to be posting them on Facebook. So keep in touch with us, follow us, and uh, we thank you for your support. And we'll talk to everybody soon.